we are taking an updated look at the battle between the GeForce RTX 3070 and Radeon RX 6700 XT. The RTX 3070 was released back in October of 2020 at an MSRP of $500 US, which of course we never really saw. Then five months later, AMD hit back with the 6700 XT at $480 US, but again, the MSRP was never really a thing. Point being though, that these two GPUs are meant to be direct competitors, though current pricing is far more favorable towards the 6700 XT, at least from a consumer standpoint. At the time of making this video, it's possible to purchase the 6700 XT from Newegg for as little as $600 US, though most models are priced between $700 and $800 US. So still well over MSRP, but they've come down quite considerably given that pricing was up around $900 just three months ago. That said, three months ago, you're also paying at least $1,100 US for an RTX 3070, but today they can be purchased from Newegg for less than $900 with the Aorus Master model selling for $850 at the time of making this video. And that means right now the 3070 is priced a little over 40% higher than the 6700 XT, which is obviously a significant markup, even if the GeForce GPU was found to be 10% faster on average last time we compared them in a 45 game benchmark. Before we draw any performance related conclusions, let's take a look at the data across all 50 games tested. Starting with the 1080p data, we find that the RTX 3070 was 11% faster on average, providing superior performance in the majority of the games tested. We also see that the 3070 was slower by a margin greater than 5% in just two of the games tested, being Doom Eternal and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Meanwhile, it was 5% or faster in 34 of the 50 games tested, meaning there were just 14 games where the margin was less than 5% in either direction. The really big wins for the RTX 3070 came in Metro Exodus Enhanced, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, War Thunder, Resident Evil Village, Vermintide 2, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Control, Serious Sam 4, Warhammer 3, and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Then moving to 1440p, we see that the margin increased slightly in Nvidia's favor. Here the RTX 3070 was found to be 13% faster on average, so again, that is a slight increase over the 45 games that we tested a year ago. If you were to remove the two best games from NVIDIA, so that means Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, the RTX 3070 was still 12% faster on average, and that is of course the beauty of testing such an extreme range of games. Finally, at 4K, the RTX 3070 was 19% faster on average, so a big performance difference there for those of you targeting 4K. The only issue, of course, for the RTX 3070 here being that VRAM usage uh, can be a problem, and it was clearly a problem in Far Cry 6. Disabling the HD texture pack would solve the performance-related issues there, but I feel when spending $500, or let's be honest, a lot more than $500 on a GPU for that premium experience, disabling high-quality texture packs when available isn't something most gamers will want to do. Still, Far Cry 6 aside, for the vast majority of games available today, the RTX 3070 offers a far better 4K gaming experience. So it would appear, if anything, that the RTX 3070 has aged a little bit better than the Radeon RX 6700 XT, though I suppose that's not entirely true. The fact is numerous driver and game developments have helped the RTX 3070. For example, GeForce performance in Assassin's Creed Valhalla was recently addressed, and this reduced the margin from 10% in favor of the 6700 XT to just 4%. There's also a number of newly released titles that favor the NVIDIA GPUs, such as Warhammer 3, God of War, and Halo Infinite, for example. So that's all very positive for the RTX 3070, but of course, there is still that little matter of VRAM, and although 8GB is still enough for the most part, we are seeing examples where it just isn't enough, though even then you can work around the issue with minimal impact to visuals. That said, the Far Cry 6 results were certainly troubling, given I was using the second highest quality preset, but with HD textures enabled. Under these conditions, the 6700 XT was capable of 60 FPS at 4K while keeping the minimum frame rate above, or well above, 50 FPS. The RTX 3070, on the other hand, was miles off playable performance with constant stuttering below 10 FPS. Again, we're not seeing many examples of this right now, but if you're tossing up between these two GPUs, the 6700 XT certainly looks like the safer bet. Still though, if you had invested in an RTX 3070 a year or so ago now, I'd say you've gotten your money's worth, certainly up to this point, and with the exception of a few examples, the card provided the most premium experience of the two. And this certainly could still be the case in another 12 months, it's impossible to say for sure. 
Now, before we continue, I thought it might be interesting to see what I said 12 months ago when comparing these two GPUs. So let's go do that. The problem with the 6700 XT isn't performance related, rather the issue is quite simply the price. Of course, we know why AMD is not being aggressive on pricing. It simply doesn't make sense for them to do so in the current market. Right now, you'd likely buy either of these GPUs if you could find one at a reasonable price. So that somewhat simplifies the process and explains why AMD has gone about pricing the way they have. Still, if you had the luxury of buying whatever GPU you wanted at or near the MSRP, which one should you get? Personally, I'd go with the RTX 3070 for $20 US more because I mostly play Fortnite with my daughter, and the fact that the GeForce GPU is already faster before you even enable DLSS makes it the obvious choice for me. I also only play multiplayer games and typically opt for competitive type quality settings, so memory capacity isn't an issue. I also like the higher recording quality you get with NVENC. It's only a small improvement when recording, but it is better, and if you stream, it's a lot better. The more mature ray tracing support is also quite literally of zero interest to me, but it is an added feature of the RTX 3070 if you care to use it. DLSS support is also still rather limited, but again, if you can take advantage of it, the performance benefits can be quite substantial. So if I could have my pick of either at the MSRP, it would be the GeForce RTX 3070, and for the 6700 XT to be even considered, it would need to be priced no higher than $420 US and would probably be my preferred option should it be available for $400 US. So the same price as the 5700 XT. So looking back at that, I don't think my opinions have changed all that much. DLSS quality and game support has only improved and the same is also true for ray tracing. However, what has changed is the pricing and as mentioned earlier, the 6700 XT can now be had for $600 US while the RTX 3070 costs more like $850, and again, that's a 42% price premium for the GeForce GPU. Despite the benefits of the superior ray tracing performance, DLSS, NVENC, and overall better rasterization performance, I don't think the RTX 3070 is worth an over 40% premium. 20% sure, but not double that figure. It's also hard to justify spending the extra money on a GPU with just 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Again, the evidence suggests that that's still enough, but I strongly feel time is quickly running out for 8 gigabyte graphics cards, at least as a high-end premium solution where you don't want to compromise on things like texture quality. If I had to purchase right now at the prices we're looking at right now, I would go with the Radeon RX 6700 XT, no question about it. If the RTX 3070 was just $100 more than the 6700 XT, it would likely, it'd likely suck me in even with the eight gigabytes of VRM, though I'd probably have to be willing to upgrade again within a year or two. It's quite clear now that Nvidia really messed up with the VRM capacity of their initial Ampere GPUs, or at least they would have if the market didn't go absolutely bonkers. As it turns out, both AMD and Nvidia made out extremely well with both products, given that literally anything they could make sold as soon as they could make it. Well, maybe anything but the 6500 XT. Anyway, that is going to do it for this look at the RTX 3070 versus the 6700 XT in 50 games. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. You can also subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Harbour Box community member, we do have Floatplane Patreon. You can sign up to those. You get access to behind the scenes content, Q and A's, our exclusive Discord server. Tim and I are active there chatting with you guys. And then we do a monthly live stream where we chat with you guys live and answer any of your questions there. So yeah, if you're interested in that stuff, check out Floatplane or Patreon. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.